I am going to be talking about an important topic that really bridges education and business, and that is employability skills. And I'll be sharing with you a product that RTI developed for the U.S. Department of Education called the Employability Skills Framework. So let's start with a definition of employability skills. There are a lot of terms being used right now to describe these skills. You hear soft skills, you hear non-cognitive skills, you hear career readiness, social emotional learning skills. All of these touch on and are part of the portfolio of skills that we're calling employability skills. And defining here as the general skills and knowledge that are necessary for success in the labor market at all levels and in all sectors. And like the Department of Education, this definition means that in tandem with academic and technical skills, employability skills are critical to college and career readiness for all students, not just students enrolled in career and technical education or adults who are participating in workforce development programs, that these skills can and should be taught across the education and workforce training systems. And we know from research that these skills are very much in demand and often cited as the most important skills by employers. But yet there are still gaps in terms of identifying what these skills really are and how they're being taught in the classroom. So to address this need, RTI created the Employability Skills Framework, which is an online resource to de design to support the instruction and assessment of employability skills. And it is intended for a wide audience, for educators at all levels and in all settings, for employers, for policymakers, and for others. It was created as part of the US Department of Education's multi-year initiative on, employ on employability skills. It was launched in 2012 and has been continuously updated since then, with new tools and resources added just this summer. And our work to develop the framework was grounded in a number of key assumptions. One, that work has been done for years to identify employability skills. So we were, did not intend to reinvent the wheel and put forth a new set of skills, but rather to build on and analyze the sets of skills that were already out there and to bring them together into one user-friendly place. Another assumption was that employability skills can be integrated into academic and technical skill instruction. So these are not new skills that needed to be added to all of the responsibilities of classroom instructors. In fact, um, as some of our research shows, these skills are very closely related to academic standards that have been adopted by a lot of states, as well as technical skill standards. And so employability skills, again, not something new, but need to be called out as important and an important part of college and career readiness. Um, our work was also guided by uh, several groups of experts, including a technical work group composed of adult education, career and technical education, and workforce development practitioners. And they suggested that we not write another report on employability skills. They did not want another report that would uh, remain static and become outdated over time. Instead, they really pushed us to think about how do you teach these skills and how do you assess them. And that is why we created an online resource, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, we also worked with a group of other federal stakeholders. So in addition to the Department of Education, we brought together 12 different federal agencies to make sure that as we began to define and classify employability skills, that we are using the same language across the government so that there could then be a common framework for employability skills. And that was one of the challenges we saw as we started to create this site, was that there are so many different terms being used and different sets of skills that had been put out by national, state, and local organizations. And that really, there was a need to compile this information into one place so that it could be accessed by instructors, by employers, by policymakers. And so you see here the screenshot for the homepage of the Employability Skills Framework website. And I'll point out the URL at the top of the screen, cte.ev.ed.gov uh, slash employability skills. Um, and from the homepage, we're not going to have time to go through all of the content on this site, but you really can access information on how to teach employability skills, how to assess them, as well as specific content for different audiences. But I wanted to spend a little bit of time showing you the framework here. As I mentioned, we created the framework based on a crosswalk of existing employability skill standards and assessments, including 
workforce credentials that were um, promoted in the employer community, including state content standards, and looked at all of the employability skills that were included in these different sets of skills. And as we began to look across them, again, kind of sifting through all the different terminology and organizational structures, we were able to group the skills uh, as represented here. So you see along the green inner ring, three categories of key skills. You have applied knowledge, effective relationships, and workplace skills. And then along the outer rim, you have nine sets of skills. And these include interpersonal skills, personal qualities, technology use, systems thinking, communication skills, information use, resource management, critical thinking skills, and applied academic skills. Now, if we were on the live site, you'd be able to click on any of these pieces to get more information, to see a definition of the different pieces, as well as to see the results of our research, that original crosswalk, the inventory, so that instructors, administrators, employers could look at those initiatives in which you're involved in and see how it relates to the framework. How do the skills that you're focused on um, relate to other initiatives, and how are they represented here in the framework? And so how can you use the employability skills framework? And, and there are a number of ways. Um, as I mentioned, there are audience-specific pages where there are customized tips and resources for educators at all levels and in all contexts, for employers, for policymakers. There are a number of tools that really get at how do you select an assessment for employability skills. What makes these skills different to assess than academic and technical skills? And so what should you keep in mind and what tools are out there? As well as a lesson planning checklist that teachers can use as they plan and reflect on their instruction, thinking through what skills am I already teaching? How are these addressed in my academic uh, instruction and, and content standards? And where are there gaps? How should I focus my instruction to make sure that employability skills are being integrated in a meaningful way? And then finally, our newest resource is a professional learning module that RTI created with the Centers for Career and um, College and Career Readiness and Success Center and the Center for Great Teachers and Leaders that really looks at and is a train the trainer module for states and districts on how to integrate employability skills across grade levels and across content areas, knowing that these are not necessarily skills that can only be taught in career and technical education or in a certain class, that they cannot be taught in isolation but need to be integrated across a curriculum. As I mentioned, the uh, audience-specific pages, I wanted to quickly go through some of our potential uses, since I know we have almost all of our audiences represented in this, office, or in this um, audience. Um, this is a screenshot. You'll see this directly on the educators page of the website, so I won't read through all of it. But I just wanted to point out, for example, number three, uh, the third tip for educators directs teachers to the lesson planning checklist and helps them understand how to use it to plan and reflect on their lessons. For employers, we have another, a number of employer-specific tools. Um, for example, tips and uh, tactics for using the framework to communicate your skills needs to your education partners. And so really being able to articulate, based on this framework, what are the skills that you're looking for at your workplace. Uh, a list of partnership roles. How can you, as an employer, support the work that's happening in local schools to support the development of these skills? And then finally, we recorded uh, earlier this year a podcast, a, ra a radio show actually on a local NPR station, where business leaders talked about the importance of employability skills and how they can use the framework to meet their workforce needs. And then finally, for policymakers, you'll see the first item directs them directly to the assessment selection uh, section because we know that assessment is a very, very important topic and um, there are a number of other resources for employers too. So I wanted to end quickly by acknowledging uh, and highlighting some of the work that North Carolina has done related to the employability skills framework. Um, your colleagues at the North Carolina Community College System has cre have created a curriculum guide on how to teach employability skills in career and technical ed programs at the post-secondary level. And they participated in and featured uh, were featured in a webinar that we did earlier this year on integrating employability skills into instruction. And so the recording from that webinar is available on the framework website. Um, as I mentioned, the radio show, The Measure of Everyday Life, which is hosted by an RTI colleague and airs weekly on 
the local NPR station featured a local business from North Carolina talking about the importance of employability skills and how she uses the framework in her work at her, at her business. And so that podcast is available on the website. We hope that it can be used as a dissemination tool to share with your colleagues about why this is so important. And then finally, um, one of my RTI colleagues will be providing a training for Youth Thrive, which is an informal network of youth service providers on employability skills, as well as talking to a local school and with the students themselves about why these skills are important. So thank you. Thank you.